Dr. John Eidner, Christian Solidarity International. Uh, he is the CEO for CSI uh, in the United States. He has traveled to Sudan over 100 times since 1992, often working on in frontline situations to document slavery and other gross human rights abuses. Dr. Eidner played a leading role during the late Civil War to raise awareness of these human rights issues among the public and policymakers. Dr. Eidner also served uh, as CSI's main representative at the United Nations in Geneva and has written extensively on human rights issues for a range of well-known publications. And I would note parenthetically that both Chairman Wolf and I have traveled to many uh, human rights abusing countries around the world with CSI, including China, uh, in the past. And so we welcome you, uh, uh, Dr. Eibner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for affording me the opportunity to testify about slavery. I am particularly pleased that my anti-slavery colleagues, Diane Gooch and Joe Madison, are with us today. Slavery, an internationally recognized crime against humanity, continues to blight the lives of tens of thousands of southern Sudanese. It furthermore darkens the prospect of a genuinely comprehensive and sustained peace and threatens the security of Africa's newest nation. May I begin by introducing Achol Deng, a liberated slave. For about 15 years, Achol served a master in northern Sudan. She was threatened with death. She was gang raped, genitally mutilated, forced to convert to Islam, renamed Mariam, and was racially and religiously insulted. She lost the sight in one eye when her master thrashed her face with a camel whip for failing to perform correctly Islamic rituals. This mother of four said she saw two of her children beaten to death for minor misdemeanors. She lost the use of one of her arms when her master took a machete to it because she failed to grind grain properly. As Sudan enters a new era of crisis on the eve of southern independence with fresh waves of violence, it is timely to revisit the slavery aspect of what Francis Deng calls Sudan's War of Visions, a cultural conflict that transcends the late North-South Civil War, a battle that continues today. Senator Danforth, the special envoy for peace in Sudan, understood the true significance of slavery. In his report to the President, he rightly identified progress on the eradication of slavery as one of his four tests of the willingness of the belligerents to embark on a course of peace. In, in accordance with the Danforth recommendations, the U.S. government sponsored an investigation by the International Eminent Persons Group on Slavery. Their findings largely corroborate CSIs. They observed that slave raiding in Sudan was government-sponsored and commonplace. Slavery, they also noted, included a disturbing patterns of abuse very much like that endured by Achol Deng. The eminent persons proposed a comprehensive policy for eradicating slavery and stated, eliminating the abuses described in this report will require major political initiatives on the part of both the government of Sudan and of the SPLM SPLA. The initiatives we propose can only succeed with assistance from the international community. This assistance must be substantial, long term, carefully conceived, and above all, rigorously monitored. Regrettably, Mr. Chairman, neither have major political initiatives nor significant long term, carefully conceived assistance been forthcoming. While the CPA correct, created a historic opportunity for ending the Civil War, it failed to include a mechanism for the liberation and repatriation of slaves. Some bold efforts were made following the signing of the CPA to restore slavery to the peace agenda of Khartoum, Juba, and the international community. I have mentioned several of them in my written uh, submission, including H.R. 3844 of 2007, sponsored by Mr. Smith and uh, co-sponsored by Ms. Watson. But these constructive initiatives failed as a result of lack of political will in Congress and in Washington generally. The signing of the CPA did, not, did however, have a beneficial anti-slavery byproduct. It produced an end to slave raids in southern Sudan. But those already enslaved during the war and their offspring remained in bondage. 
according to southern members of the southern uh, government, I beg your pardon, the Sudanese government's former showcase anti-slavery organ, the now dissolved Committee for the Eradication of the Abduction of Women and Children, over 35,000 uh, slaves from northern Bar al-Ghazal alone remain in bondage. In addition, slavery is used as a weapon of war against black Africans in Darfur. The enslavement of horrific, uh, and uh, horrific abuse of Sudanese captives of the Lord's Resistance Army in Equatoria, which I'm sure the bishop could speak uh, a very long time about, is yet another appalling and neglected facet of Sudan's slavery pro uh, problem. I would encourage members to search for ways to implement the constructive proposals set forth in the report of the eminent persons. In particular, the need for a financially transparent and functional Sudanese national institution for locating and liberating slaves, a program of research on all aspects of Sudanese slavery, an institution with international and indigenous components to monitor slavery and its eradication, and finally, an American or international mechanism to follow up the eminent person's recommendations. Twelve years ago, Ambassador Susan Rice came face to face with liberated slaves in Mari Bay, southern Sudan. She pledged then that the United States would work tireless, tirelessly to stamp out slavery in Sudan. Let us strive to achieve the goal established by Ambassador Rice. Failure to eradicate slavery with all its overtones of racism and religious bigotry will leave Sudan, in Sudan, a deadly cancer destroying possibilities of reconciliation and undermining chances of sustainable peace and stability for the new state of southern Sudan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for giving me the opportunity to testify and also for all you and your colleagues do to achieve the eradication of uh, slavery in Sudan and elsewhere. Dr. Eibner, thank you very much for your testimony and your leadership and for ensuring that we try to stay focused uh, on this horrific issue of slavery.